Oh, right, off we go. I'm going to cut a little wedding, so I thought I'd take you with me. Um, the rattle you can hear is the trusty trolley. Now we're going to walk straight past the annuals and go and cut the dahlias first, uh, because this wedding is a best in the garden on the day wedding. Always the best combination of colours. So I choose my colours based on the best dahlias. Here is the wildflower meadow, which is finally being cut and cleared. There's another clip, a couple of clips back, if you want to see how we manage the meadow. There's funny stakes in the middle of the field, have orchid seed heads hanging from them to make sure that the seed is well distributed around the place. Look at that purple loose drive. Oh, heaven. Right, better get going. Hello there, my name is Georgie Newbury and I'm a flower farmer and florist based here between fashionable Bruton and up and coming Wincanton here in sunny Somerset in southwest England. And today I'm cutting a little wedding and I thought I'd have you come along for the ride if you fancy it. 400 stems and uh, nothing too onerous, but a lovely venue. They're going to the Temple of Apollo at Stourhead, which is just up the hill from us. And it's a gorgeous little venue. Anyway, I'll tell you more about it as we go along. Um, by the way, <laughs> if you're enjoying these clips, you can subscribe. Somewhere there's a subscribe button down here. Press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips. Um, and if you like the free content and find the hints and tips useful, you can always buy me a coffee and the link is in the bio. Obviously, it's not a real coffee. <laughs> it's a virtual coffee. And I really appreciate it when people do. Thank you very much. Come on then, let's get cutting. <laughs> Look at the snip someone stabbed at the top of the thing. Anyway, uh, I'm going to cut... And the bride said I could cut anything I liked. She just wanted the best in the garden on the day. <gasps> what fun. Uh, so let's see how I start. You'll see when I start filling the buckets what we have. I have these dinky, smaller, look, finger for scale. <laughs> Clafe lay dahlias. There's another finger there. You see? Uh, dinky cafe lays because, oh, look at that. Um, I left these, the, this tuber in the ground for years, for like six years. And the flowers got smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more useful. Um, so last year I dug up the great big enormous tuber and split it, but didn't take cuttings. I just split the tuber and planted it in the ground. And so I've still got these lovely, slightly smaller cafe au laits and they're really useful. Uh, so there you are, how not to look after your dahlias. Acidanthra make a great addition to late summer weddings. Ideally, they'd be planted successionally. Uh, obviously, I didn't do that, so they're all flowering at once. But hey, they're still fantastic. They have an absolutely delicious scent. And for that, I'm very grateful at a time of year where scent can be a little bit thin on the ground in the garden. So you can see the colour mix I've gone for, sort of blush and pinks and whites with a little mood from the Physocarpus nine bark to ground it all. Um, this is 50 dahlias and the rest I'm going to cut in 25s. So it's 25 acidanthra, 25 Physocarpus. And actually I'm going to take it all back and put it in the studio because uh, I may as well keep the dahlias out of the sun. Obviously I've parked my trolley in the shade because occasionally the sun keeps coming out and when it does, it's really hot. So I always keep my trolley in the shroud. Bit of, bit of top tip there. Plant a bit of shade or build a bit of shade so that you can part, put your trolley there while you cut. Look at the proper sky blue of this Salvia uglinosa. It's a really invasive plant, so don't plant it unless you've got space for it. But if you have and it likes the ground, How's that for good blue for the late summer? I got waylaid by a bit more shade on the way back to the studio. So I picked up some lovely white phlox and this amazing blue salvia uglinosa or bog sage to you, madam. So other than the dahlias of which I've cut 50, I'm cutting in 25s for this wedding. So I can see very quickly that I've got 50 dahlias 
and one, two, three, four different 25s. That makes 100. So I've got 150 stems there. And then because each bucket on principle holds 50 stems, you can see I've got room here for another 250 stems. Just turn the tap off. <laughs> And then I'll know that I've cut the right amount for the wedding because, oh, tea cake. It's all about the stem count. So coming along, this is actually 350 stems here. Uh, so I've got another 50 or so to cut. Um, I may cut a little more because why not? And generosity is the name of the game. But of course, once again, do what I say, not what I do. Spot the sunshine out there? Ah, uh, yes. So, excuse the skip. There's always a skip in the go here. Instead of filling my trolley and bringing it back in all in one go, I'm having to bring my trolley in every time I have a little... Like, I can't leave these roses in the sun. They'll just flop. I can't leave this mint in the sun. It'll flop. So... I'm having it to bring it in. So I'm wasting my valuable time. Always cut when you can't feel the sun on the back of your head. Right now, I can certainly feel the sun on the back of my head. So here we have about 400 stems. Well, when I say about, <laughs> exactly 400 stems. And it's a pretty little mix. And I think it's gonna make a very nice wedding. And I think the point I'd want to make here is if you're thinking of commissioning somebody to do your wedding flowers and they grow flowers themselves it's so worth saying to them yes just do whatever's best in the garden on the day because it's more interesting for the florist and it means that you really get the best in the garden on the day and a good florist who grows her own flowers his or her see <laughs> there are gentlemen involved in this arrangement also um, we'll really love that and we'll take advantage of the opportunity. And when you've seen what I do with this, you'll see why the colours are so good together. Quite often, you know, a bride will say, no, 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 no orange. But you wait till you see what I do with that orange. Now, oh, here we are. I've made tea cake. What are you doing? Uh, she's annoyed. I'm in the way of her basket. Anyway, so here is the bride. Lots of colour. But quite bridey. Always try the bride on. Hold her round in lots of ways. Imagine, you know, that photograph where everybody's standing side on, um, looking lovingly in a cornfield. Um, I may pudge her later, but she's looking good so far. God, I've got arms like hams. So the bridesmaids posies are just miniature versions of the bride. Um, dinky, quite hot colours. But, you know, best in the garden on the day. I really like the hot colours. But equally, if the bridesmaid likes something cooler, <laughs> she can just turn her posy round and go for a cooler version. You know, something for everyone. And then we have four sweet little buttonholes, dinky doos, and or boutonniere. I can't do an American accent, so forgive me for that cultural appropriation. Um, but here is, uh, that's a little one for the bride's mum. So it's got a different colour leaf and it's got a dahlia instead of a rose. And then we have 10 little jam jar posies, which are going to line the steps up to the Temple of, Temple of Apollo at Sarhead. It's a lovely place to get married. Um, we'll look very pretty in the pictures. And then afterwards, they're going to be used for table centres and they're having a picnic. This is, I love this, at Starhead. If you have a wedding at Starhead and you get married at the Temple of Apollo, you can afterwards have a picnic <laughs> on a stretch of lawn by the lake, which is roped off from the general public. And they have baskets of picnic food and the posies can be, because they're in quite narrow jars, can be tucked into the baskets. Such a good idea. Waste not, want not, and how pretty. Anyway, I hope it goes very well. I hope they have a lovely day on Saturday. So there we have a dinky little 400 cent wedding, which has made a bride's bouquet, two bridesmaids, four buttonholes, 10 posies, and a few spares. <laughs>
<laughs> you can always have some spares. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this clip. Um, do subscribe somewhere there's a subscription button. Uh, click the bell icon and you'll be told when we have another clip. And if there have been any particularly useful tips in this whole thing, then you can always buy me a coffee. The link is in the bio. Thank you very much. Obviously, it's not a real coffee. It's a virtual coffee, but it's very handy. And I'm really grateful when people do. So thanks very much. And I will see you again soon. Bye. A little postscript. So there the boxes all are, all packed up and ready for collection. And I'm just waiting for my bride now. And hopefully she'll love them. <laughs> you never know.